Okay, we're recording, we're live. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for hopping on. I'm so excited to see so many faces on. Um, and I know I don't know everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm so stinking excited. So um, for those of you that uh, don't know me or haven't gotten to meet, I'm Hannah. And um, I, hey Joelle, I have been a coach since January. And um, I just want to tell you a little bit about my background so that you know where I'm coming from. And um, yeah, so like I said, I'm Hannah. I live in San Antonio, Texas. And um, yes, it's still hot as balls here. Um, it's not quite fall yet. Um, but anyways, so I just want to tell you a little bit about my background because it's it's like, it's so simple. So, um, I, um, I am a band nerd and, um, I have known since the ninth grade that I wanted to be a band director, like a high school band director. And those of you that aren't in Texas, you may not know, but high school football is a big effing deal here. And so along with that comes, um, a lot of, the, you know, like the spirit stuff that comes with it, like um, band and cheerleading and all of that stuff. So band here is like a super big deal. Um, I have 450 kids in the program that I came from. Um, so anyhow, all that to say that I knew where my life was going since the ninth grade. I was like, I want to be a big time high school band director. I want to be a wife and I want to be a mom and that's it. And I just want to be so comfortable. Um, I thought everything was going to be just this simple little little life in a box and I was totally and completely content to live that little life in a box. Um, so you can't hear anything. Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Okay, cool beans. So like I said, I just wanted this like little picket fence life and I was totally good with that and that was enough for me. Um, so I went to college, I graduated, landed my dream job, and it was a nightmare. I worked like 15 hours a day. I worked uh, 15 hours a day, just Monday through Thursday. Fridays, I worked 18 hours. Saturdays, usually I worked between 18 and 20 hours. And Sundays, I would come up to the school and get like all the BS work done. So um, two years later, I left that job to be with my now fiance. And I moved from Dallas to San Antonio. And I'm getting married in March. So we're at like the five month mark. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, and I... Um, I got another job very similar to what I had. Thank you. Um, very similar to what I had before, but with um, a lot less, a lot less stress. It was a little bit easier of a job. So I'm still working crazy hours. I still work anywhere between like 10 and 18 hours a day, about five or six days a week. Um, but I'm, I'm much happier here. I have a life outside of my career, um, which is not something I ever thought it would really want. Um, because like I said, I wanted to be like this hotshot 6A, which is the biggest kind of school band director that just like kind of took over the world of band. That's what I wanted for myself. So when I, um, I actually started Beachbody programs when I was in college and I went all the way through T25 um, and I loved it, but I was a college kid. I didn't continue with the Shakeology and um, on demand wasn't like a thing back then. So um, I actually, between college and January, completed six different programs and never became a coach and never received the Shakeology every single month. Um, and then uh, my, uh, my coach, Lindsay, um, I think she asked me for over two years to become a coach before I finally said yes. And I kept saying no because I was just like, I don't need any more chaos in my life. I don't need anything else. I'm content with what I do. I'm content with my family. Everything is just as I need it. And that was all I wanted. You know, like I said, I wanted this little life in a box. And 
I said yes to this and I told Lindsay, I said, I don't know how to half ass anything. I only know how to go 110% into something. So that's how I'm going to handle this. And I took it head on. I've been going since January. I'm like this close to diamond. I can like, I could lick the diamond. That's how close I am to it. So, um, uh, anyways, I've hit, I am very close to hitting um, Success Club All-Star. Um, anyways, I just, I've been really fortunate in the business and it's because they've put a lot of work into it and a lot of heart into it. And um, for lack of a better way of putting it, I put my full ass into it. So um, I wanted to talk about Success Club specifically um, because it's the end of the month and it's time to hit your goals okay so real quick i want to recap what happened in august because august was a weird month it was team cup month and i i just i could not get my life together in august i went back to work um in august i was working um you know 12 hour days every day um and it was just i could not get my ass in gear and so august was really weird i was about it was literally okay so i live in texas so i'm one hour behind like the beach body operational time and i it's 10 o'clock at night and it's august 31st and i'm sitting at sc4 and i'm like laying in my bed next to my fiance in fucking tears. I'm just like in tears because I don't want to lose my streak and I'm totally freaking out and I totally dropped the ball this month and I was like, oh my God, this is what I get. This is what I fucking get for dropping the ball. So, um, I am being kind of, um, like vibing off of Andrea a little bit and uh, doing some manifesting. Um, and so I literally just laid in bed and I was like, I just said all of these affirmations like to myself I had sent like in that last hour I had sent like 16 messages to people that I had been talking to just with the link thinking like oh my god maybe somebody will fill out this link tonight so I laid in bed and I said I said these words and you can steal these affirmations if you want um, because I fully believe in positive affirmations so if you want to write these down this is a really good place to start this um, this helps you with success club, but this is not like the main point of the call or anything like that. So I said, I am successful. People trust me. Success comes easily to me. And you can make that your own in whatever fashion you want, but people trust me and success comes easily to me. So anyways, I, um, long story short, somebody just, um, somebody just messaged me and said, Hey, I filled out the link. I'm so excited. And I was like, Oh my God. And then I didn't sleep the rest of the night because I was like high on these amazing vibes. So anyways, this desperation kind of led to like a huge whoosh and push into September. And I was so excited to get September started. So comes, I think it was September 5th. I was at SC12. Um, so here's how I did it. And this is where you're going to want to get um, some pen and paper and write this down um, because I actually wrote out um, a step by step process for you guys. Um, so the, okay, I planned it out um, and taking notes, it's like my job. <laughs> Love it. Um, anyhow, so you can do all of these things that I'm about to tell you, but if you do it with the incorrect energy behind it, or you don't take action immediately, your success club points will not happen. Okay. So like, yes, easy five-step process. A monkey can do it. You can do it too, but you have to do it with the right energy or it's not going to happen. Okay. So make sure you're doing this with heart. Okay. That's how we have to run our business with heart. Okay. So number one, this is the very first thing you're going to do and leading up to your post that is going to help you hit success club. You're going to create a list of people who have said no, or that you've been building relationships with, and you're going to send them a personal invitation. So you create that list. I'm really old school and like tactile and I like colors and stuff. Like 
this is my notes for tonight. Like, I don't know if you can see that. The lighting in here is kind of shitty, but it's in so many different colors. I love colors, so I like to write my list manually or I put it in Excel. That way I can have it on Google Drive and I can access it from my phone, et cetera, et cetera. So create a list of all of those people that have either said no or not right now and create a list of all the people that you've been having conversations with as of late. And you're going to send them a message and your message may go something like this. Hey, Becky, um, if it's, you know, if it's somebody that you haven't invited before, you'd say, Hey, Becky, I have loved keeping up with you. It looks like you're crazy busy at work, but I wanted to send you a private invitation to one of the, to my upcoming group. Okay. And I tell, I, I start there and I send it and then I send a second follow up message immediately because I think it's easier for people to digest if they see like this huge thread, like sometimes they get overwhelmed and they won't read it. But if they see, you know, a couple of different small threads, I think that's easier to digest. If that's not how you operate, totally cool. If you want to send a voice message, that's totally cool. I've started to do those a little bit more and um, it's actually been a huge time saver. So um, I send her that and I say, spots are super limited because I'm going to be working with everybody on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I wanted to offer it to you first because I thought you would do really well in the group. So you want to make it seem like they have been chosen to be in this group. It's somebody that, um, you know, you do genuinely want to work with them. You, that's really, really important. So you want to make sure that they feel chosen from the people. You say, you can also add in like, I'm going to open it up to the public, but I wanted to offer it to you first because I thought that you would just absolutely kick some ass at it or whatever you want to tell them. Yes, I'll repeat the invite, Angie. So, and I can even create a document, you guys, and stick it in Misfit later with kind of like my like my own little scripts and stuff. So the invite says something along the lines of, hey, Becky, it looks like you've been so busy at work. I love keeping up with you on Facebook. I just wanted to let you know, or I just wanted to send you a personal invitation before I open it up to the public for one of the spots in my elite group that's coming up. Okay, and I leave it at that. I don't want to give too much information. That's super overwhelming. I don't want to, you know, I just, I don't want them to be overwhelmed. I want to begin a dialogue there. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, step number two, you have to track your conversations. Okay, so remember we started with that list of people that we've been building a relationship with. Um, and you want to just kind of like, like I said, Excel works really well for me. I'm not great at streak. My school Wi-Fi doesn't like streak, so I can't do anything, um, anything from uh, streak um, at work. So I just do it on Excel. I'm super old school. Um, so you want to track your combos. You want to write down who you invited, who you sent a personal invite to. And it could be as simple as putting a check mark next to their name. Whatever system works for you. That's the whole point of this, guys. You have to find what works for you. And I can give you the outline and anybody can give you the outline or the script, but you have to make it your own, okay? So do what works for you. That was number two is track your conversations. So number three is creating the post. This is what we all love to do is create, create, create. So the the post that I created, um, and you guys can go and stalk me if you want. I think it was a public post. Um, some of my stuff is private because I'm a school teacher. I don't want my kids stalking me. Um, but um, <clears throat> the post was really simple. I tried not to give too much information because I wanted people to begin a dialogue with me. Um, so you can go back and look at that. But I wanted to share the different points of that post. Now, I have not ever had as much engagement as I did um, on this post in another call to action post. And I think a lot, a lot, a lot of that has to do with my consistency on social media. Um, so you guys have got to be consistent leading up to this, okay? So here's some points about your post. And this is number three, creating your post. And think of these as like A, B, C, under three, okay? 
timing. You have to post it at the right time of day. I could post an amazing transformation picture at 11 o'clock in the morning and I will get like zero interaction on it. Okay, so you have to post at the right time of day. I find that about eight o'clock at night is usually the best for me because that's when people are scrolling at home and that sort of thing. Um, and then you have to think of how that relate your post and what you're asking people to engage in relates to the time of year that you're in. So for me, it was the second week of school. It started to feel like fall. And I don't know about you guys, but fall like kind of brings out that sense of like um, excitement and like anxiety about the holidays, not in a negative way, but in a like, oh my God, I'm going to see everybody. And oh my gosh, I want to feel fabulous. And all of these things that we you know, hope for, for the holidays. And so, um, I played into that a little bit. I just wanted people thinking like, um, thinking forward about the holidays. And I was trying to capture on everybody's excitement about the weather change, because I don't know about you guys, but when fall happens, I'm like, yeah, I want to like make a shift. I'm going to like, you know, redecorate my house and I'm going to like change, you know, my wardrobe or whatever it is. So I, I feel like I tried to capitalize on that, like feeling of refreshment and renewal and um, being excited about the holidays. So here's the really, oh, sorry. So the photo, we all know that if you see a ton of words and no photo, you're not going to freaking read it. I don't read it. That photo has to be so engaging. And I try not to throw garbage photos out there. Um, so what I wanted to do was like get everybody's attention with a single photo to where they wanted to read what was before it. So I just took this goofy ass selfie and I slapped some giant words across it and I said 20 pounds challenge. It wasn't like, hey, lose 20 pounds today. That sounds like garbage. It was a challenge and it was 20 pounds. Um, and so that's how I got everybody's attention um, with my with my photo. And then, like I said, I didn't put very many words with it. I wanted it to start a dialogue. So here's the biggest thing about call to action posts. Okay, and I, um, it's they have to be infrequent. And I say that because I see so many MLMs and people that work for other MLMs that say. OMG, drop your emoji if you've never tried this, or OMG, who wants to be my product model, or um, oh my gosh, message me if you want um, to get in on my shipment, or whatever. Like, that is garbage. It's absolute garbage. And so you have to stick out. And if you are constantly saying like, hey, lose 20 pounds with me, hey, you know, get skinny with me or whatever. Like those are amazing things to, to want to give people, but it's got to be infrequent. You have to, you have to make the, you have to build a relationship with them first because nobody's going to go, Oh yeah, 20 pounds. We all know that's a scam. Okay. So take care of your business. Do not post these like twice a week. I don't post more than two call to actions once a week. And one of them is coaching and one of them is my challenge groups. The only thing I will post more call to actions to is my free groups because I'm only in asking people to invest time. I'm not asking for their money. Okay. So like I said, these have to be so infrequent. They have got to be rare because people don't want to don't want to scroll through and see opportunity after opportunity that becomes white noise but if they're like oh my god this girl's never i don't remember the last time she offered something like this it's then they're going to want to capitalize on it okay so um that's my spiel on that i just i get so fired up about that i think that is so 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 important um uh um that post has to be done with high vibes and high energy we talked about that earlier okay so if you're like man i'm really not feeling that but hannah said i have to post this like don't do it go go to sleep wake up in the morning take your energize do your workout and then be like bam i'm ready to post okay so do something that gets you in the mood for it get yourself freaking excited um 
And here's the other thing that was different about this post than previous posts. A lot of my challenge groups are based around self-love and learning to live a balanced life and um, finding a community of people that have the same goals as you. Well, those are uh, incredible goals and those are long-term goals and those are amazing things to get people fired up about because that's what life is all about life is not about losing the 20 pounds it's about living a balanced life that is happy and healthy and finding a community of people that support that <sighs> I'm talking too fast um, so don't be afraid to every once in a while put a really concrete objective out there like those 20 pounds like those 10 pounds. You know, it's okay to do that as long as it's infrequent, like I've talked about. Okay. So that, I think that got more traction that got people really excited, um, was, oh my gosh, yeah, I could lose those 20 pounds. Or I had people messaging me like, Hey, I don't have 20 pounds. I only have five, but can I still do it? Um, hells yeah, you can. So it's just, it's really nice to have something concrete every once in a while. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, so we covered number one. I'm looking at my notes. Sorry. <laughs> um, number one, creating your list. Number two, tracking your conversations. Number three, creating the actual post itself and then all the points that go with that. Number four, okay, follow up immediately follow up immediately you want to capture the that person's excitement so if you see somebody that commented on your on your post you want to immediately go and reply to their comment saying like information coming at you or ooh girl i'm so excited whatever your vibes are go out and do it and capitalize on their excitement i find that the longer the time is between the time they say hey i'm interested and the time that they say yeah i want to do it i'm committed the longer that time the less likely they are to actually go through with purchasing the challenge pack and becoming part of your challenge group um so you really want to capitalize on that. Like I said, you re respond to their comment because you want to keep your affinity high and keep your post at the top of everybody's page. Um, and then you're going to immediately send them a direct message um, sh showing them how excited you are. Now, if you're not like me and you're not like, Whoa, all the time, that's totally fine. Sh find a way to show your own excitement. Okay. And ask them a question. So my question with this challenge, it was the 20 pounds challenge. So I said, Hey, Oh my gosh, I'm so stinking excited that you want to be on this journey with us. What are some of your other goals aside from those pesky 20 pounds we were talking about? Okay, so that's, that's a way to open a conversation and show them like, hey, I care about you. I care about your goals. And yeah, it's just a way to show them that you're listening. That brings me to my next point. You have to listen to them. Obviously, I'm really good at talking, like so good at it. But you have to you have to work on listening. So when somebody tells you what their goal is, you know, hey, my goal is to also, um, is to also meal, learn how to meal prep. You can say, um, oh my gosh, yes, meal prepping is such a lifesaver for teachers like us. You know, relate to them. Don't just talk about you, but like bring them into your little world, you know? Say, oh, that was, that was such a huge key for me. I know it would absolutely work for you. You always bring it back around to them. Now, I also, am I'm a um, cautious person. And so I, when I communicate with people, I want to be reassured. Um, just like when I'm teaching my students and I say, okay, everybody, we're starting at measure 60. What measure are we starting in? And they all say 60. I want to be reassured. So if I'm putting myself in my challenge or my potential challenger's shoes, I'm going, I'm saying, you know, like, I'm so scared of that I'm going to buy this product and that I'm going to fail again because the chances are this person has tried to lose weight before. So what I did is I explained to them, I said, you know, this group is really elite and I, I know coaches that don't limit their groups, but I, I'm limiting this group because we will be working together one on one. 
on a daily basis and I will be next to you the entire way. I will be on the journey with you and I will not let you fail. I always type that and I type it in all caps. I will not let you fail. And I reassure them, I will walk with you in this journey. I will be here every single day. We will meet every week via Zoom. That's what I like to do with my challengers. I like to meet with them via Zoom. We make a plan for the week. I check in with them, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, yes, don't let them be scared. They, they need to know that you are set and you are ready to go and that they can go on that journey with you and they can be as successful. Um, so just remind them that you're going to walk with them. And then this is the part that we're all really good at, telling them what they get, the products and all that. So I don't like to use the word product or program. I think it's kind of icky. So I use the word tools. So they say, okay, so what's this gonna cost me? I say, well, here's all the tools that you get. And I list them out. And I don't always put um, Shakeology and 500 workouts on demand. I also add things like you get access to an app for free where the, the professional trainers are gonna be checking in. And you also get one-on-one -on -one support from, from me and you get meal plans and blah, blah, blah. Cause I provide all my challengers with meal plans um, for each week of their challenge group. And then I like to follow up with, these tools are incredible, this is the cost. And I, I know people are scared of MLMs because of like recurring fees and stuff like that. So I always tell them, I say, the total cost is a one-time cost of $160. And there are no reoccurring charges if you forego an option of the, the, uh, of the challenge pack and we can cross that bridge when we get there. So, um, I just, I like to let them know. I don't want anybody to feel like they're getting tricked um, because I've had people read the fine print before and go, oh my God, this is going to keep coming every month. I said, yes, but you can cancel anytime and we'll cross that bridge when we get there and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, and then I immediately follow up. So I send them the information, the tools that they're going to get. I love that word tools. Um, and then I say, but the deadline is here or I only have four spots left. Um, so, you know, you want to create some FOMO, some, some like sense of urgency in them. So make sure that you set a deadline to make sure that you limit the number of spots, do something to put a little bit of a sense of urgency in the person that you're talking to. Okay. So, um, step five, the very last one, <laughs> um, check your list every single day. Okay, so I always give somebody 24 hours to respond to something before I either go, oh, it doesn't, I don't think that person's actually interested, or before I send a follow-up like, hey girl, I know you've been so crazy busy, just wanted to send a follow-up before I opened up that event to the public, or hey, I know that you've been out of town, I've only got three spots left, and I was saving one for you. Okay, so, you know, make them feel special because they are, these people are trusting you, these people are giving you their time, their money, they're being vulnerable, okay, and that's not easy, like, I think us as coaches have an easier time being vulnerable and open and honest, or maybe that's just me because I don't have much of a sense of modesty, but these people have, may have a hard time coping with that sort of thing, so just you know, love them, love them hard. Um, so here's your homework. I hope you wrote those five steps down. And this is your homework. If you have not done a call to action post in the last two weeks, you must create a call to action post using those things that we talked about in step number three. Okay, decide when your challenge group is going to start, decide on the sign up deadline, and decide how many people you're going to accept and what the objective or the goal is. That's my teacher coming out objective, sorry. Decide what the objective is, okay? And it can be something really concrete, like lose 10 pounds by Thanksgiving, okay? So choose your objective, create your post, find an amazing captivating picture to go with it, and post it at the right time. Um, yes. Oh my gosh, Andrea. Yes. Write it right now. Your energy is so high. I hope, I hope your energy is high. Mine is high. I'm like, I'm not going to sleep tonight. Oh my gosh. Um, 
So go write it right now. And you know what? Go share it in Misfit. We all want to feed off of each other and see each other's posts and you know, go post it in Misfit and then go post it on your page. It's still early in the evening. People are still looking at it. And um, you know, you can use an old selfie. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I was like in my pajamas earlier. And you, you know, like sometimes my inspiration strikes when I'm like, in my pajamas and I have no makeup on. So I just go and find an old ass selfie and I slap some, some stuff on it. Okay. So, um, use your, use your little selfie collection to make that happen. Um, that is all the information I have for you guys. And I, I hope you got a lot out of it. If you have questions and you want to drop them in the comments, I'm happy to answer anything like that. I don't think I left anything out. Yes, who has questions? I want to add one little thing that, and this is like the thing that I think is so cool. It's okay to like work your business differently and have different belief systems. And like 99.7, like there's something about sevens for me today. I don't know what that is. Um, percent, I'm like, I'm so aligned with everything you said. The only thing that I do differently though is that I do post call to actions more frequently but they're just more subtle. So, right. Like, right. And I think that's kind of what you were, you were trying to say, but I wanted yeah, to absolutely. that. So if you guys did like a clear call to action invite post, like here's my challenge group. I have X number of spots, like an obvious, your whole post is all invite. Cool. Post that, you know, for me, I'm going to post like a legit hardcore one tomorrow, probably around like nine o'clock Eastern. Um, if I wrote it fast enough, I could probably squeeze it out tonight, but maybe I will. We'll see. We'll see how fast I write. Um, yeah, I kind of post think, it. Huh? Oh, sorry. I kind of think of, um, like some of my bread crumbing as yeah. call to actions, but I think that's what you're talking about where I say exactly. like, Hey, you know, I write this big old thing. And then at the end, like, if you want to chat, I'm here or whatever. I think, I guess that is a call to action. <laughs> Right. And yeah, so that's kind of why I wanted to just clarify that it's like, oh, and I honestly think like most coaches do not do it enough. And I, for the coaches that are struggling, I can easily like scroll back through their Instagram or through their Facebook. And I'm like, well, you know how I think of it this way. Like I have such an open door policy where if you just happen to like show up in my neighborhood, like my door is open, I will make sure you get fed, like adjust that open door policy, but most people probably don't feel comfortable just coming over completely unannounced. They don't realize that it's okay for them to just walk in. Even though I feel that way, they may right. not know that. So it's kind of the same thing with your business. They may see that you're doing awesome stuff, but it may still not connect with them that you have an open door policy and that it could be something that they could do as well. So if you're not finding ways to weave it into your posts and tell them that, you know, it's available for them as well, aside from like, you know, maybe two like obvious call to action posts a, a month, you know, I think that you're doing your business a disservice and honestly them, um, because they probably just don't even real, they're like, Oh, good for her. She's having this awesome group. That's nice for her. But maybe I think a lot of people also don't realize how virtual this is. So even still today, there's a lot of people who don't realize, you know, that it's something that they could do even if they're not in the same area as we are. Joelle says, feel your passion, girl. Love your butt. Yeah. I can just hang out with Hannah and I'm like, okay, there's my energized. <laughs> You're my energized Hannah. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, I'm blonde and everything. It's all oh, yellow. Red. Well, Lindsay said, I'm so happy you didn't block me. <laughs> she stalked me for like two years. It was awesome. Oh my God. That's so good. I'm glad she didn't block you either. Way to, way to like walk that fine line. Like, right. Good job. girl. <laughs> Oh. oh, I don't see any questions. Girl, you killed it. Thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. all your goodness. Like I took, I, I took so many notes. If you guys like wrote down one thing, that little nuance at the end where she said, here's your tools. I'm like, ah, that's like such an awesome little tweak and change. So I'm totally stealing that from you. Awesome. Thank you right, so much guys. for hopping on guys. Um, go write your post.
Go write your post. And then tomorrow, if you guys start to feel low on energy, we are going to have people go live in my big team page every single day this week until the end of the month. So if you guys start to feel like your vibes are getting low, we have some surprise guest speakers that are going to creep in there and give you a zap of awesome energy and inspiration. And then you guys go back to your invites. Okay. So we're just going to crush the end of this month together. Love it. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks, Hannah. Absolutely. Y'all have a good night. Good night, guys. All right. Bye.